What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with SPY, Tesla, NVIDIA, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'm going to break down some very important levels to be watching for, how to try to look in my personal opinion, and what you should be watching for going into tomorrow because of what Jerome Powell said, and also because of some very important data that's coming out. But before I break any devil's information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am personally not a financial planner, so make sure you take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. Anyways, when it comes to the market, we are parabolic. SPY went all the way down to about this 542 area during the pre-market. We did call this out. And I told you all that we can't turn bearish unless we lose 542. And we didn't actually lose that. We held support very nicely. I said since the morning that SPY would likely pump and pump and pump thanks to Powell. And that's what ended up happening as we got closer to some very, very key levels. I also mentioned to everyone that if we broke past 545.8, we'd be looking for 547 and 550. We went all the way up to 549, came very close, and we'd still have more upside potential if we managed to break through and get some good data for tomorrow. So overall, the chart is looking more bullish. The S&P 500 closed above 5,500 for the first time ever since Jerome Powell said what he had to say. So what did Jerome Powell say? Why did the market pump like this? Honestly, guys, he didn't say anything that's too out of the ordinary. He basically said that there has been progress on inflation. The Fed is once again optimistic. However, they're not ready to cut rates. They have to look for more decent data to do so. He also mentioned that they don't want to cut rates prematurely. They don't, they don't want to do it too early. Otherwise, they have to kind of like uh, do the work all over again. And he's once again remaining very, very, I would say, ambiguous for the most part when it comes to the way he's answering questions. He still was saying the same things about how they're waiting on data, he, they can't make any promises and this and that, but he did say some more dovish things about how the Fed is making progress, and once again, uh, inflation will eventually come down in about by the end of next year or later into next year, we're going to likely see much lower inflationary levels, and the Fed is once again still looking forward to that. So that was very, very positive. The market just started to shuffle when Powell was speaking. After he finished his speech, it started to run, and we saw this run continue throughout the entire day. We also saw Tesla announce its deliveries. I went over this in the morning. Deliveries were a nice kill for Tesla. They absolutely crushed it. They ended up uh, squeezing shorts like crazy. That's why Tesla's up over 10% for the day. And we saw a very, very nice move for Tesla as the market is continuing to hold up. So very awesome to see Tesla finally starting to play a game of catch up with the market. It's been a while for Tesla to get a big run like this. And it's awesome to witness this going forward. For data about the markets, I want to call out something very important. Please note, we don't really have any crazy earnings, but when you look at the dates, tomorrow is going to be Wednesday, okay? The market's going to close at 1 p.m. tomorrow. It's going to close early because of the 4th of July. So we have only half a day of trading tomorrow. Trading is only going to go on until about 1 p.m. So make sure you're prepared for that. Make sure you're ready just to be safe. And then for Thursday, the stock market is going to be closed completely. I'm referring to the New York Stock Exchange, not to mention the NASDAQ. And... I also want to note that uh, with the market being closed, uh, there won't be trading until Friday. So Friday is when we're going to be seeing a full day of trading again. Until then, we just have half a day on Wednesday, then an uh, entire closed day on Thursday. I want to give you guys a quick reminder about that. Now, one thing worth noting about that is despite the fact that Wednesday is only half a day of trading, we have crazy amounts of data coming out and some things are going to be pretty big. So firstly, we do have initial jobless claims before the market opens. It's kind of minor. It might not cause anything too crazy. But 15 minutes and 30 minutes after market open, we have quite a bit of data coming out. We firstly have the S&P Global Composite PMI and Services PMI. 15 minutes after market open, this might cause somewhat of a move. So just be prepared for that 15 minutes after market open. But the big data tomorrow, or at least the first set of big data will be this. This is going to be the ISM services data. It's going to give us more insights on how the services sector of the economy is looking. And new orders and prices will be very important for inflationary data, which is going to affect the Fed's policies. So look for very, very important amounts of volatility at 10 o'clock a.m. tomorrow, 30 minutes after the market ends of opening. That's when I think we're going to be making a very, very big move. And then that's the first piece of data. However, the stock market will close at 1 p.m. So it's going to close early. And then after market close, we actually have the FOMC minutes. That's going to be very important too, but that's going to be after market close. Why is the FOMC minutes so important? It's basically going to be a report that gives us more insights on what the other Fed officials are saying. So it's not really an FOMC meeting. It's just a report that comes out. And we're going to get more insights on what the Fed wants to do. When are they projecting their next... Uh, you know, uh, potential cuts, what are they thinking about the economy, what's their view of inflationary projections, and what are they thinking about their next monetary policy uh, altercations. So that's going to be very important. 
uh, I think that's going to, you know, likely cause somewhat of a move during the after hours, if not as we approach Friday. So make sure you keep this in the back of your mind. Another big piece of data is coming out. So tomorrow's a pretty big day, guys. Lots of big data comes out, even though we're only trading for half a day. And then lastly, I just want to talk about this before I break down the charts. As you guys can see, the fear and greed index is currently at neutral. We're in the middle. We were becoming fearful as the market was kind of like pumping before the market started dipping. But now we're back to neutral because buyers are still stepping in. Momentum is still at extreme greed because the S&P 500 is well above the 125 daily moving average. This suggests that we're still in a very, very high valuation and the bulls are still very strong. The puts and call option positioning is at extreme greed because a lot of these puts are once again uh, being closed and we're starting to see a lot more call buying in the markets. There's a lot of buyers still stepping in. The bulls still have the edge. Also, market volatility is neutral because the VIX is still lackluster. It hasn't broken the 50 daily moving average. So with the VIX looking lackluster, this is kind of affecting premiums a bit, but it's nothing too crazy. This actually could benefit us in a lot of ways, depending on your strategy, especially if you're going long on options or playing something like that. So that could be a little bit advantageous for people. Uh, but like I said before, uh, at the same time, it has like another negative effect, but I'm not going to go over the full effects of that. I just want to focus on the market. Let's start off with Tesla. Tesla had a very, very, very nice day up 10%, looking very strong. And usually when you have a 10% day, the momentum, it could still be there. Now, one concern I have is that Tesla has to be fighting this resistance at this 230 area. If we break that, I see 233 coming and eventually 235 and 237. Tesla has more upside potential, has potential to push up even higher. Now, if we break down, watch 228. If we lose that, watch 225. As long as we're above 225 and 228, we're more bullish. If we lose 225, we could actually see a little retracement. Now, there's a lot of data coming out, so we'll see how that ends up affecting Tesla, especially the ISM data that's coming out at 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, but if we just kind of set the data aside and just look at the chart, it looks bullish. Plain and simple, very, very bullish. We could start breaking to the 230s. I think we're going to gap down tomorrow, possibly around 228, maybe a little bit lower. And then we'll be watching to see if buyers step in and start to defend it, which is very probable. So there's a good chance Tesla gaps down and starts pumping again and still looking very, very bullish. Also, when you look at the charts, we have a nice inverse head and shoulder setup with a price target of about 260 a share. Now, it's not going to happen overnight. We may not reach that until August time until we approach like the robo taxi event so i think tesla has the potential to continue to uptrend uptrend does not mean it's going to be green every day we're going to likely gap down tomorrow we'll see what we do from there there could even be some red days but slowly tesla will climb 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 its way up into these higher levels i see a lot of potential for the share price remember tesla has not really gone a massive ai run like nvidia yet and it's just barely starting right now so pay attention to the levels i called out and we'll see how things go regardless of the data always be open-minded and just know that the chart still remains bullish how about for SPY? Are we bullish? Are we bearish? What's ha happening? Right now, we look more bullish because we went down to 542. And I said, remember, watch 542. If we hold that, we're going to bounce. If we lose 542, we turn bearish. What happened? We touched 542 during the pre-market. Then as soon as Jerome Powell started speaking, the market started uptrending, then started to consolidate. Jerome Powell was done with his speech during his interview. And then the market went bananas. It went crazy. We went all the way up to 549. So we are not showing signs of weakness. In fact, we're looking very strong right now. So watch support currently at 548.5. If we lose that, I'll be looking at 547 potentially. Uh, in the after hours, don't worry too much about that. We kind of lack volume, but I'm talking about tomorrow. And if we get down to 547 and lose that, look for 545.8. If we bounce, uh, I think what's going to happen is we might gap down and start to try to push higher. Look for 550.5 around that area as resistance. If we break that, we're going all the way up to 552 and eventually 555. So we look bullish on SPY, especially as we have the four hour developing very nicely. But I favor that what's going to happen is we gap down tomorrow. I think that as long as the data is decent tomorrow, we should continue to push. I think 550 is a potential target. And that looks more probable, especially after this very bullish day. The odds favor us kind of gapping down and pushing higher. I think that's very likely for how we start the July 4th weekend. We get a little bit of a push. However, I can't make promises. We'll see what the data causes. I'm just saying that technicals favor upside strongly on SPY. For NVIDIA... NVIDIA was running like crazy over the last couple of weeks, and now this thing is turning lackluster. So you guys can see we're just stuck in this channel right here, continuing to downtrend. If we don't break past 123, we could actually dip a little lower to about 120. We're also red underperforming relative to the markets. We need to break past 125 now just to see somewhat of a break to turn back to bullish. Otherwise, we're on a downtrend. That's the way I see it. So I think we're downtrending. We're going to continue to downtrend unless we break past 125. For Bitcoin... 
Bitcoin is dipping a little bit, especially on the four hour time frame. And we're going to likely retest this previous support becoming uh, previous resistance becoming support at 61,750. So I think we might be testing that. If we lose that, we'll dip a little bit lower. Uh, and then we could be seeing if we get a bounce or not. But I see a little bit of a dip coming to Bitcoin. Might dip a little bit more before we try to get a rebound. I'll be waiting to see if that ends up being the case. Overall, the structure is still decent. We're holding up well, but we'll see how things develop. For the QQQ, okay, I like what we're seeing right here because we have a nice cup and handle like structure, just like this. You guys can see it. Looks like a cup and handle to me. And if we break resistance right here, especially at this 488 area, we're going to be making a new all time high on the triple Q. So make sure you watch 488 as resistance, 486 as support. If we lose that, we're dipping down to 484. If we lose 484, I'm going to turn a little bit more bearish. I'll be a little bit more apprehensive. But so far, this chart looks more bullish and it favors upside. Look for a gap down tomorrow, then a continuation higher. I could be looking for a potential target to 490, then eventually 492. So the chart is looking more bullish to me as we approach these new all-time highs. It favors a little gap down than a pump, and upside looks more probable. For Apple... Apple has been pumping very, very nicely. As we're trying to push, look for 220 as resistance of this breaks. We're looking at 222. And if we lose 217.6, we're going to be dipping down to about 216 than 214. My gut is telling me that as we're looking bullish on the four hour, Apple has more upside potential. We might gap down tomorrow and try to continue to push, but look for a fight at 220. It's kind of tough. This is going to be some tough resistance, but I think Apple has potential. I'm seeing a lot of bullish momentum here, so it favors upside even more. But look for a gap down and then we'll see how it goes. The odds do favor more upside for now. For Palantir, we pumped all the way up to about 26.2. Uh, I did call this out, 26.5, but then we rejected after that. So we did call the pump only to reject. I think we're going to be we're going to be testing 25.36. Make sure, you, <laughs> excuse me, you watch that level very, very carefully because that's going to be a critical support. I think we're going to be testing that tomorrow and we'll see if we get a bounce. So watch for that very, very closely. I was incorrect about Supermicro. I want to admit my mistake. I thought that this thing would hit 800 and maybe get a rejection, start dipping down to about 780 before it tries to bounce. Uh, but we didn't do that. We actually didn't go all the way down to 780. We bounced off 800 instead. So now we're approaching resistance around this 844 area. Uh, sometimes Jerome Powell could say things that causes the market to make new moves and new catalysts come, could come out that make things different from what even sometimes a chart may suggest. Charts are, in my opinion, correct the majority of the time, but not always. Sometimes new catalysts could come out. And that's what happened today. So it is what it is. Now we're going to be watching resistance at uh, 844. If we break that, we're going up to 860. And if we end up losing support all the way down here towards 831, we'll be dipping down to about 800. So I would say that this head and shoulders -like structure on Supermicro could have been a trap. I'm not going to solely just count on that. For now, it looks like it's trying to bounce. So look for a test of 844 tomorrow. I think we're going to test that and we'll see if it breaks or not, but it has potential to push higher now looking at momentum. Rivian is trying to rebound, testing 15. We, I said that it's either going to test 15 or we're about to get a rug pull back down to 12.94. I favored the upside and that's what happened. If we break 15 now, I think we may slowly start pushing up to this previous support becoming resistance at 15.8 as our next slow target. So I see upside potential in Rivian. The chart's looking more bullish. We just need some good data tomorrow. As long as we hold up through the, good, uh, through, through the data, whatever it looks like tomorrow, we're going to likely push it for 15.8. For SoFi, like I said, it was kind of lackluster, kind of trading sideways, not really doing much. That's what we talked about yesterday. So now it has a nice channel here. We have 6.3 as support, and we have resistance around 6.58. I think we could try to push up for 6.5 to eventually 6.54. A little bit of a push, but I'll see if we end up holding or not. But that's going to be very, very key. Uh, I think we might push a little bit. Excuse me, guys. Sorry about that. We might push a little bit on SoFi all the way up to about 6.54. So I favor upside a bit more, and we'll see how things go. For the IWM Russell 2000, we have a nice inverse hand and shoulders. We need to see this thing break past 202. However, we haven't broken resistance. I'm going to be looking for a test tomorrow. If we break that, we're going to be looking for a push back up to 204. And if we end up losing support at 201, we're going to be dipping down to about 199. So this chart favors upside. That's looking more probable to me. And I can't wait to see how things develop from here. Looking at AMD, we have a nice looking potential structure that's developing. We've got a nice looking four hour uh, time frame. And I think that this might try to go all the way up to about 166 tomorrow. Look for a gap down and a push up for 166. That looks more probable. And I think that there's a very good chance it's going to be going even higher. For ARM, ARM is looking more bullish on the four hour. Uh, as long as we're above 161.64, it's going to go higher. If we lose 161.64, we're going to be dipping. My gut tells me it's going to try to continue to push up towards 170 all over again. It's looking more bullish. However, Coinbase is looking lackluster. We're barely holding 226. That's going to be our key support. Uh, we have resistance now at 229. We got to try to break through. That's to get back up to 230, 
uh, 230.8 plus or even higher levels like 235. We got to get back above 229. If we fail to hold 226 tomorrow, we're going to see a rug pull and we're going to be coming back down to fill this gap down to 222. I'm seeing a weakness on the four hours, so the odds do favor this possibly coming down. I'm not going to guarantee it, though. We're kind of stuck between our EMAs. We were stuck between the 20 EMA at 226 and then resistance at 229. We're stuck between that level. So watch which way we break. If we lose 226, we're going down to 222 to fill the gap. If we break 229, we could be pushing for 232 plus. I'm in the middle. I'm going to wait, but I am seeing some signs of weakness that aren't looking that great. So just be careful. We'll see how it goes, and we'll see what the ISM data causes going into tomorrow. For the one and only Amazon, we got a nice looking bullish wedge that's developing here. We're going to be looking for a test of 200. Breaking that, I see 202 plus coming. Amazon is looking very, very strong, very, very bullish. But 200 is going to be kind of tough. We'll see how this ends up reacting right there. Also, don't forget this support right here that we called out earlier. Uh, I'll be watching to see how well we hold around very close to 198. I'll see if we can try to hold that range. So I'll be watching this on Amazon. Amazon's still looking bullish. It has potential to go up to 202, if not 205. The chart looks more bullish, but watch and see if the data helps us. For Meta, Meta is looking more bullish as well. We're actually pushing up very, very nicely. We're holding up very well. So I'll be watching to see if we could try to continue to break 510. If that breaks, we're going all the way up to 516. If you lose 507, look for 504, then a dip. As of right now, the chart favors upside looking at the four hour. I think that 516 is looking more probable. We'll see if that ends up being the case. For Microsoft, we're looking more bullish from a technical standpoint. 460 is looking more probable. We could even try to break this, so I see more upside potential for Microsoft. I'll be watching to see if that ends up being the case. Google looks like it wants to be pushing all the way up to about 188, so I see a little bit more upside. It's going to likely gap down tomorrow and start pushing up for 188. Looks more bullish to me. Then we have the one and only GameStop. So on GameStop, what's good about GameStop is we held our... 200 EMA right here at 23. Because we held this, we're trying to rebound. We need to try to break past 24.11. If that breaks, we're going up to 25. I know these numbers are very basic, but that's what the chart's showing us. But it's looking like it has some potential to bounce. I'm seeing a little bit of potential. It's not looking that strong, but I, I am seeing some signals that suggest that 25 is possible. AMC is on a very, very nice uptrend too. If we manage to break and hold above 5.25, we're going to be looking for a much bigger push all the way up to these higher levels to 5.4. DJT is also starting to reject right here. It's showing some signs of weakness. We called out downside yesterday, and lo and behold, there's your downside. I think that this imbalance here could get filled around 29.7 to 30. So I think we might be dipping a little bit more to the lower 30s. That's looking more probable to me. The VIX, it's still looking lackluster. It's barely at this 12 area. If we lose that, we could be going back down to 11.5. So it's still looking kind of weak. There's no sign of it breaking past 13.5 our 200 EMA. Not yet. Maybe later it could happen, but we're not ready yet. It's still looking lackluster. So this suggests to me that the market has a little bit more upside. We might push a little bit more. So we'll see how what kind of reaction we end up getting. After Jerome Powell's speech, the 10 years come down a bit. It might actually dip a little bit lower, which could be bullish for the markets. I think it might dip for 4.35 after what Powell said. So we'll see how things go. And then last but not least, we have the one and only dollar index looking kind of weak. We rejected on it. We failed to break past 106. So I'm seeing a little bit of weakness here. Although it's in a channel, I do see potential for us to dip all the way down towards 105.5. So we'll see if that ends up being the case. Anyways, uh, with that being said, I want to thank you all so much for listening. Please have a great day, guys. I really appreciate every single one of you guys. Please take care of yourselves and just know tomorrow is going to be a wild day as we have more data coming out. Jerome Powell came out today. He helped the market pump quite a bit. But the question is, can we maintain this? The answer is, I see a little bit more upside potential. We might gap down and pump, at least technically speaking. But resistance is going to be tough as we approach all-time highs. We will see what the data causes from ISM, not to mention the FOMC minutes. So we're going to be expecting some major volatility. The last thing I just want to remind you guys about is the calendar for this week. Remember, tomorrow is going to be half a day. The market closes at 1 p.m. For Thursday, the market is going to be closed completely thanks to the 4th of July. And then for Friday, the market is going to be open as usual. So keep that in the back of your mind. Mark your calendars and get ready. We're going to see some interesting volatility. With that being said, thank you all so much for listening. I'm especially proud of all the Tesla investors and all the people that made money. I literally called out yesterday, if you look at my previous video, that if Tesla did well in deliveries, we're looking for 230 a share. And if we ended up failing, if we failed, we would have seen 190 a share. What happened? 230 came. Tesla did well. They beat expectations doing over 444,000 deliveries. Great job, Tesla. Great job, team. They absolutely killed it. So yes, we called this move on Tesla. We did call this yesterday. If Tesla did well for deliveries, there's the move. And we got whatever it was that we predicted. So there's more upside potential for the markets. Uh, with that being said, thank you for listening. Please enjoy the rest of your evening. The weekend is almost here. It's going to be very nice to have a day off. But until then, 
take care of yourselves guys and i'll see you guys very soon on the next video going into the tomorrow before the market opens so i'll talk tomorrow i'll see you guys then take care of yourselves and peace out